Over the last 40 years, our adventures and fishing trips have taken us to some wonderful places, but I must say, none quite as unique as this one. Now never did we think we'd be fishing for carp, a stone's throw away from the roaring waves of the sea, with a sandy backdrop of the south coast. I guess they say variety is the spice of life, and the thought of catching a few carp from this crazy location was just too much to ignore. However, this short trip turned into a test of utter endurance. <laughs> as Mother Nature decided to remind us that once again, she calls the shots. So buckle up, as this trip was like nothing we'd ever experienced before. Mate, it's terrible. Yeah, this is grim, isn't it? Oh my God. Well, welcome to the Bude Canal. It's a venue that's always been on the must visit list. And in fact, myself, nor Mark, you've not visited Mark, have you? No, never been here before but it's taken us three hours from the sunny Cotswolds and then we've driven all the way down to the south coast to fish this lovely little intimate canal. Mate, and it hasn't stopped raining since we left the Cotswolds. It has been hammering down and it's just literally, it's gonna stop in about 10 minutes time, but it's just relentless. And Mate, look at the canal, it's like chocolate. Typical timing for us. We yeah. never time these things well, no. but it's in the diary. We can't change it round. We had to come today. And also we were coming down to see Jordan, whose bivvy is just behind me here. Now, Jordan is a bit of a bewed canal oracle. He's caught some lovely carp over the years. And if you follow Jordan, he's actually called the dude from Bude on social media. You'll see lots of lovely bewed canal carp. So we've always wanted to come down. We're hopeful that we can get one or two ourselves. We've got about 24 hours in this horrific weather. But first things first, it's not gonna stop raining until one o'clock. We're gonna, there's a boat over there, Mark, isn't mate, there? That looks all, like it serves breakfast. <laughs> already spotted, mate. Yeah, there's a big coffee sign out the, out the, out the front, but they do breakfasts, so I yeah. think we should get over there, mate, because we've got another 10, 20 minutes of this rain before it passes through, so. Yeah, lovely. So we've got to get some food, have a coffee, and we've got to get some day tickets from the local tackle shop, yep. which I believe is over across the road yeah, there. Yeah, yeah, over there somewhere. And at some point, we might get some rods out. Oh, but no, uh, yeah. yeah, it's nice and warm and it's fun. It's absolutely <laughs> horrible out there. <laughs> but it's an amazing venue, really cool, right next to the sea. It's a bit salty water, a bit brackish from what I can gather, but there's plenty of carp to go at. So hopefully, we'll get a lovely picture of a carp with some crazy sea boats in the background. No mullet, <laughs> no flounder, just carp. <laughs> We sat in the warmth of the cafe for the best part of an hour to let the storm pass. But it also gave us a great opportunity to quiz Jordan on the canal stock and what might be on offer before we pulled ourselves away from the warmth of the radiator and headed off to purchase our tickets from the local tackle shop. Well, first port of call is we've got to get some tickets. And uh, Jordan's pointing in this direction of the local tackle shop. But Mark is losing himself like a child at Christmas. It's locked here, isn't it? Oh, yeah. I remember all this stuff. Yeah. Greased oh. weasel. I used that as hook links back in the day, yeah. Yeah, because it's really stiff. That's it. That was a hook link. Yeah, like, like three inches. What a great name, the greased weasel. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Amazing. Yeah. Well, with the ticket purchased, it was time to explore this historic location. The Bude Canal was actually opened in 1823. Its purpose was to transport lime rich sand inland to be used as agricultural fertilizer. Now the Bude Canal is one of the most unusual in Britain for many reasons. Partly due to its ability to accommodate large boats and transport them from sea level to an altitude of over 400 feet, a real engineering masterpiece of its time. Now Bude Sea Lock is just one of only two sea locks in the UK 
allowing boats to access the ocean is even still possible with the help of a team of volunteers who keep these impressive canal gates in use. Now over 200 years on, the canal is mainly a tourist attraction and it just so happens to be home to a few carp that we hoped would be partial to a boilie or two. However, we'd not even got the rods out the van and Jordan was already into a couple of bites in quick succession. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> I, think, I think he's catching the same ones, aren't you? Oh, yeah. yeah, that's it, they keep coming back. So he's catching the same fish over and over again. Yeah. I put them back on the, uh, back in the canal and I just, that's yeah. That's a different colour though, that one. Yeah, that one's, yeah, more of a silvery one. This one's got scales all over us, the other one was partially scaled. Right. So, um, How late to yeah, of course. Back. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> have, you been, have you been putting them in for him? Yeah. <laughs> Hooking them on the end of his line, aren't you? <laughs> that's it. <laughs> the fishmongers, yeah. I reckon you're right. Too right. Let's get out, mate. Have a look. Getting liners as we speak. Oh dear. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, it's all the things that you didn't tell us, Mark. Real secret, secret little little number. Because <laughs> good condition. Yeah. Yeah. Really. He's an old one. One of the originals. He is. Is he? Yeah. That's a crazy car, that. It is a proper crazy one, isn't it? Yeah. Walk the plank. Walk the plank. Walk the plank. <laughs> Seems quite apt for a seaside time, mate. <laughs> oh. oh, pirate Brian. Well, setting up felt rather strange. We had a very small strip of grass next to the main canal road in front of a long row of holiday homes. The road was also busy with both locals and tourists enjoying the delights of Bude. But we soon got our shelters up to give us a little bit of a respite from the elements before deciding on what spots to fish and what tactics to approach the session with. Right, so I've come across to where I'm gonna, I think I'm gonna fish too. Obvious feature is boats on any canal. And we've got a couple of big ones down this stretch. So I'd, I'd hope that any fish coming up and down here would uh, visit these. So I'm just gonna have a little leather bait rather than do it from the far side and thrash it. Might as well just come around here and drop it in and see what we can feel. All right, so that is a fair bit of depth there, but the bottom's all like just sand and a bit of bit of debris, hardly anything to worry about. So, uh, yeah, uh, I think I'll just have a little bait. Flick a few baits here, this will be one rod. And then the other rod, I may sort of look down that area and put one down there, I think. That's a, that's a good start of a 10. Well, I'm gonna wrap this up quickly because it looks like Jordan's got one. Oh, that's windy. You can hear me. Looks like Jordan's got one up there. So uh, let's get back round. Oh. Well, first afternoon, mate, the rods are out and uh, first impressions, it's a little bit of a crazy place. I can't imagine what it's yeah. like in the summer. Yeah, yeah, I reckon this would be well, even worse in the summer. Won't be, there's loads of people about now, but can you imagine in the summer, there'd be loads of kids jumping in and dogs and paddle boards, paddle boards. Yeah, 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 yeah. I think we picked a good time, but um, well, at the moment, the fish are to our left. We haven't we literally hadn't got rods out and Jordan caught two. He's caught two, he's caught two, lovely to see. So lovely to see there's some cracking fish, lovely scale patterns on, so that bodes well, but we just hope that there's some fish in this area here, um, rather than sort of all coming from left to right. And if they are coming from left to right, then it looks like Jordan will probably pick them off before they get to us, but yeah. I don't know. Some of them got to slip through surely, but rods are out, Mike, as you said. Yeah, yeah. Um, Fishing over to the far bank, yeah, aren't we? Which yeah. is a, a little bit, uh, a bit, a bit fraught because I'm fishing up to a boat where have I mentioned that people are eating. Well, where we were eating earlier. Oh, I just don't. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> I yeah. Thought of having a lead yeah. crash through there on a, well, you on be, a miscast. You got to be careful with the old catapult with the baits, aren't you? Yeah. Yeah, one missed time when you just send 
a load of 15 millers through the window in the kitchen. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but mate, tactics are, are, are basically boily tactics, aren't they? Yeah. I'm fishing snowmen. Uh, you fishing snowmen? Snowman, yep. yeah. Yeah, boily tactics. Pretty standard Because of the stuff. bream. And, yeah. uh, and, and, and we found out today that last week they stopped 2,000 tench. Yeah, 2,000, <laughs> and they were like that big. Yeah, little soap bars. Yeah, yeah, tiny ones. So, so. it might be bad timing. Who knows? But yeah, but it'll, uh, we're just going to sort of while the afternoon away. Yeah. Probably have to hunker down because the rain's coming in. Yeah, tonight. Yeah. Mate, look at look at the sea over there. Yeah, it's that's... literally one lock away, which is crazy for a location, but it yeah, is white horses, in, isn't white it? horses coming in out there. Mm. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Let's see what the afternoon brings. Yeah, all we can do is wait, mate. See what happens. Well, the day or the afternoon has passed through pretty uneventful for me and Mike, has to be said. Although, um, Jordan has had three, I think, and he's fishing up a good hundred yards away from us. But we're sort of in this main basin and we're hoping, huh, hoping that some fish will turn up tonight. Um, who knows? But we've got a bit of a plan. If they don't turn up tonight, it's going to absolutely hammer down between sort of three o'clock in the morning and first light and then carry on. But if we haven't caught anything by first light, I think we're probably gonna be on our toes and we're gonna move up to the top end and try and chase down some fish. So uh, that's the plan. But for now, I'm just gonna reach up this rod onto the same area. Um, yeah, and get settled down for the evening before the light goes. I'm not quite sure how I've lost the light today, but we didn't get the rods out until at least one o'clock. We've only had them out a few hours and it just feels like the light's gone already. It feels like it's going to be dark in 10 minutes. And once again, I'm trying to chase it to put these rods out, which is stupid really, because uh, I've had plenty of time, but I've been chatting and, and taking in the sights of the canal. But I'm just going to quickly put some new baits on. Snowman rigs, 15 mil Atlantic heats, topped off with, a, with an induce that's been heavily boosted, so they stink. And fingers crossed that will keep the bream at bay and with that lovely smelly topper because they're looking at the uh the canal is chocolate brown it might just uh help them home into the hook bait but i'm rushing <laughs> i'm rushing and i'm all fingers and thumbs because i want to get these rods out and i'm a bit of a stickler i want to get them out precisely because we've literally only got one night we need to make it happen tonight and tomorrow morning otherwise we'll be uh hitting the road with no Bude Canal carp. We haven't got long. I've made a little mark in the ground so I know exactly where to put my feet every time I cast. And the plan is, as I say, to try and get it next to that, next to that rope without hitting the boat. Here it goes. That sounds and feels perfect. I'll do. Both me and Mark were fishing over a mix of Atlantic heat and Cremino. We actually put around 100 baits over each rod before sitting back and watching a wet, windy, yet wonderful view sunset. The sound of the incoming tide and the smell of the sea air really did add a strange dynamic to the location. But an hour or so into dark, Mark came up with a great plan that none of us could refuse. Well, there's a slight change of plan. Um, we've just had some dinner, and as it's uh, fairly early in the night, and we've got long nights still in the winter, the rods are broken down. Mr. Bryant's there. He's got his rods in his hand, and they're going to go in the back of the van for an hour? Two hours. Two hours. Two hours, you see. If there's a fire, it'd be two hours. If not one hour. If not one, yeah. So they're going to go in the back of the van along with mine. George's going to put his in there. And we're oh, going yeah. to go to the pub for a pint, which is literally just at the end of the canal. So sounds like a great idea, doesn't it? Yeah. 
Perfect. Might put the idea in our minds, and because we thought it's a long night ahead, why not? While a couple of hours away, chewing the fat in the pub with the rod safe and sound in the van. That sounds a great idea. Don't tell Claire. Don't tell Claire. <laughs> <laughs> she's gonna go how'd you get on today love was it oh really mate oh, really cold, busy yeah, cold crazy. wet oh no it's hard work but she watches this mark because the next clip you're gonna see after this is you sat in front of a fire <laughs> don't let her watch it yeah nothing to see here claire all good Look, respectable. yeah you've you planned this haven't you you've absolutely planned this <laughs> Cheers. Cheers, George. Cheers, mate. Lovely. You've got the football on. And the warm fire over there. It's a win win, mate. It's a win win. Thank you, mate. Okay. Time to, ca time to catch a cart? Yeah, time to put them out. Yeah, go on then. What's the chances catching a cart tonight? I'm good, feeling like good, I'm gonna, to I'm gonna, good to fair. Good to fair. Good to fair. I'm gonna have more 12 ounce tench probably. So <laughs> yeah, I reckon so. <laughs> oh, I don't know. Lines out. You've had a free feed. Yeah. Could be on. We're talking a good game. Oh right. dear, dear, dear. Time to get the rods out. Get our heads down. With the rods clipped up to the fire bank marks, it was a simple underarm cast before we all retired for the night. Despite being quietly confident, we also knew looking at the weather app that a monsoon was due to hit Bude the following day. The winds blew harder, bowed it down, blow me bully boys blow. Soon may the weatherman come to bring us sugar and tea and rum. One day when the dying is done, Good morning, mate. <laughs> morning, mate. That was a, a trenchful night, wasn't it? Somebody looks a little bit tired. Yeah, yeah. It was uh, it absolutely hammered down, didn't it? Hammered down. Yeah, I was going to get the camera out, but um, it was still dark. Yeah. But you could tell the wind coming in from the ocean. Yeah. I'll, um, I'll spin around in a bit and show the size of the puddle behind my bivvy. Yeah, yeah. But we had an hour of monsoon-like yeah, weather, we did. didn't we? Yeah, yeah. But it brought some fish with it, didn't it? Which was good. Yeah. So, uh... I know you had a bream, a couple of bream, I had a couple of bream, but we both had a carp. Yes. Yay, so, mate, it's good. Just it's after good. the rain stopped, literally like 20 minutes before first yeah, light. Yeah, look at this, look. Look, that's hang where on, we are now. On. Let's have a look. Two seconds. Yep. That's what we've been, oh, that's what we just went through, that big monsoon there, and literally, that's coming in about 10 minutes or so. So Which is that, that blue cloud, that another big, big... Yeah, it's a big one. This big one's coming through next. Mate, so. we, we always use this app. What, what is it for people that are thinking, what the hell uh, is rain that? Rain today. It's what the farmers use, isn't it? Yeah, it's... Agricultural. Give, it gives you like an hour or two in terms of what live satellite. So brilliant for... And it's so accurate, isn't it? It's very accurate, yeah, to the minute almost. So, yeah, uh, yeah for packing up and everything, you know, so I, know, I knew we had to get up now and get these fish done. And then what's our plan, Mike? We're going to move, aren't we, I think? Yeah, well, we're, um, because it was really slow here yesterday afternoon, I mean, we've only fished, pff, I don't know, not even 12 hours, is it, really? Yeah. About yeah. 12 hours in total, but it was clear that the fish seemed to be at the top end by the lock gate. So yeah. we're going to pack up, chuck everything in the van, and we can drive up to the lock gate, can't we? Yep. Um, and we're going to drop a couple of rods in the edge yeah. and uh, fish there for the day yep. and see if we can work ourselves another chance. And if we can catch a carp up there, yeah. the backdrop is... It's pretty crashing, epic. rolling waves of bude, which pretty would be epic, amazing. Yeah, 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 yeah pretty I don't cool. think there's anywhere in the, in, I don't know, there'd probably be a few locations, but I'd better be hard to find a backdrop like that. Yeah, absolutely. Well, you've set it up now, Mike, so we've got to go and execute it, eh? Well, yeah, epic fell coming. Right. Let's go and sort these fish out. Here he is. Oh, there he is, a lively little common. I'm sure there's, uh, there's probably bigger ones knocking around, but this one made the mistake. But yeah, very, very welcome on a very wet night. 
Right, let's get you back and see if we can get a bigger one somewhere else. Well, in complete contrast to the fish that I've seen Jordan and Mark catch, this one's a real plump one. Um, and Jordan did say that there's a bit of a variety in here, so yeah, this one looks like he's definitely been eating all the boilers. Lovely backdrop behind us. Yeah, the, the boats haven't started to uh, serve breakfast yet. So everything's still nice and quiet and imbued for the time being. But that's a lovely one. We'll take that mite, won't we? Yeah, there we go. Oh, he's on his way. Gone. Not the ceremoniously perfect release, but... Back into hot chocolate there. <laughs> With both mine and Mark's fish slipped back, we packed down as quick as we could between the heavy rainstorms and headed to the beach. Mate, this end is a complete contrast from the other end, isn't it? Yeah, it is. It's, uh, it's literally, there's the sea, like right, right there. Um, and it's a bit narrower, but I think with all that work going on down there and a lot of silt being disturbed, I don't know. Fish could be uh, be irritating their gills. Potentially, this top end there's a bit of water coming in from the sea as well. So I yeah. don't know. It's uh, it's a theory anyway, but there's certain we certainly think they're here. So, have you brought uh, your bucket and spade? Yeah, I think I should have. Day like today, this is typical English summertime, isn't it? Look yeah, it. look at it. Got the beach over there. And we're hopefully going to catch a carp here with a backdrop of the sea. In hindsight, if we knew just how bad the weather was going to get, we may have headed back home that morning. But we'd driven all this way in the hope of a beachy backdrop, so decided to set up before the eye of the storm tested us to our limits. Right, the plan is I'm going to lower this in and walk it over the lock gate, so I think that's the joy of uh, fishing close to this. Perfect. Morning. That's enough for a bite. Now I've got to walk this back over the lock. With as much line out of the water as I can. There we go. A bit of luck. Put that back on the nest. And we're fishing. <laughs> oh my god! We are hunkered down. I don't know if you can hear the bivvy flapping. This literally wants to take off. I'm holding on to the bivvy. <laughs> you holding on to it? Mate, it's terrible. Yeah, this is grim, isn't it? Oh my god, look at it! <laughs> Some white caps coming over the sea, aren't there? See the toilet? Oh no. Oh, I got a take! I got one! Grab the net, quick! Oh my goodness! Quick! 
<laughs> oh dear. Here we go. Oh, it's going to take off the bivy. Go in. Yay. Right, let's leave it there. Leave it there. Leave it there. That's got to stay there. The bivy is going to take off. Quick. Oh. Oh. Quick. Good sign. Get out. Oh. Oh. Mate. <laughs> Mate, I'm absolutely soaked. Oh my god, what timing? Do you have a push? That was good timing, I managed to oh, mate, well done. record good. that and that obviously get the bike live. Yeah man. Mate, oh good. mate. Good. It's so windy. Right, let's turn this off because I need to hold the baby as well. So you're, you're gonna take off like Mary Poppins. <laughs> As you were saying, what do you reckon the wind is, Mark? It's got to be 50, 50, 50 miles an hour. hour? Yeah, it's got to be, yeah. It's literally, we're holding on for dear life. We didn't film it because we didn't have time, but blind me. Oh, that literally took off a second ago. Mark was holding on to it and we've just managed to put it down. Oh, terrible, isn't it? Oh. Absolutely terrible. Despite another visit to the boat cafe for fish and chips, everything was soaked. And to be honest, Bude's weather has well and truly broken us. <laughs> Hold it on for dear life. We did catch a couple more, however, but no monsters, sadly. So it's soon time to pack up and head for the warmth of the van. Well, that's it. Thank you very much to Bude and to Jordan. We finished the day <laughs> with two lovely seaside carp with the sea crashing behind us. I honestly don't think there's another location like it. No, definitely not. Really unique. Mate, it's been, uh, it's been a fun time, but I must admit, everything's getting blown away. It's probably difficult to even hear me on the mic. The fish's tails are flapping in the wind. <laughs> but there we go. Thank you very much, Bude. It's time to get on the road before everything gets blown away. Soon may the weatherman come to bring us sugar and tea and rum. One day when the dining is done, Take a leave and go.